so it's not uncommon for users to forget the passwords to their account. Hence, it's necessary to add a forgotten password system to any login system. In this video, we implement the backend of a password reset system in a Node.js login system. We implement this using the Node.js login backend that we built in a past video. I will link it up here and also in the description below. This is another episode of To The Point Code and let's get right into it. So the first thing we need to do is to head to the command line and open the project in the code editor. Inside the code editor, we see all the directories containing the files that we've created. So what we are going to do is that when a user needs to reset the password, he or she will send a password reset request. Once we receive the request, we want to generate a unique password reset string and assign it to the user. Once we generate the string, we want to keep track of it in a database. So inside the models directory, we want to create a model to handle that. Now we copy the contents of this file and make some changes. Now for the properties, everything will stay the same except for the unique string, which you will change to reset string. Now in the API directory and under the user.js file, we import this model we just created. We will make use of this later. Now the next thing we need to do is to set up a route to request for the password reset. That is, that will be the first route to be called when the user wants to reset the password. And this will be a post request which will be received from the front end. Now in the body of the request, we'll be expecting an email address and also a redirect URL. We'll make use of the email to send the password reset email to the user. And the redirect URL will be put in the email so that once the user clicks on the link, he or she will be directed to that page on the front end. Now making use of the user model, we want to check if the email provided exists in our database. If it doesn't exist, we will then return an error. Now what will be returned from the search will be an array, so we want to check if the length of the array is greater than 1. So if the length is greater than 1, then it means that we found a valid record, otherwise the user doesn't exist and we return an error. Now once we know that the user exists, we want to check if the user has been verified. In the previous two videos, we added email verification to our login system, so we want to check if the user has been verified, otherwise we don't give the user a chance to reset the password.
So if the user is not verified, we return a message. Now once the user is verified, we go ahead to send the user an email. Now as arguments of this function, we will send the data, the redirect URL and also the response object. We will create this send reset email function very soon. Now from the first argument, we will destructure the ID and email. Remember this is how the ID is stored in the MongoDB. Now at this point, we will generate a reset string using UUID and also the ID of the user. Remember we've imported UUID already. Now the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to clear all the records matching this ID in the password reset collection. This is because a user can request for multiple password resets at a time. So once the user makes a request, we want to get rid of the existing record pertaining to this user. The property is user ID. Now at this point, the records have been deleted successfully and we can send the email. The first thing we need to do is to set up our mail options since we'll be using node mailer. So we sent a similar mail up here, so I'll just copy the mail options. This is the one we sent for the verification email. Now this value will stay the same, the email will stay the same, but we'll change the subjects. But for the password reset link, we want to make the live very short, so instead of 6 hours, we'll make it 60 minutes. Now for the link, instead of using the current URL, we'll make use of the redirect URL. The current URL will lead us back to the server. But for the password reset, we want to go back to the front end, so we'll use the front end link that we received from the request. We will get rid of this too and leave the forward slash. Now the ID will stay the same and we will change this to the reset string. Now at this point, we want to store the reset string in the database and send the email. But it would be a bad idea to store the reset string 
plainly in the database. So we are going to hash it first. And we are going to do that using bcrypt. First, we need a variable to store the sort rounds. This is something bcrypt uses to ensure that the hash that will be generated will be difficult to crack. So make use of the hash function on bcrypt. For the hash function, we pass the reset string and the sort rounds. Now over here, we will receive the hashed reset string. Now once we receive the hashed reset string, we will store it in the password reset collection. So we create a new password reset record. Remember, we've imported this model already. The first property will be the user ID, followed by the reset string, the time we created it and when it has passed. For this, we use the current time, so we'll make use of date.now. For the expires at, we want to add 60 minutes, and that will be 3,600,000 milliseconds, so we add that to the date slot now. Once we are done, we use the save function to save this in the collection. Now at this point, we've been able to save our password reset record and we proceed to send the email. Here we'll make use of the transporter. And we created a transporter app here using our Gmail details. So we use the send mail function on the transporter. As the argument, we pass the mail options. Now at this point, our email has been sent successfully and also we've saved the record in the password reset collection. So now we return a JSON object with a status of pending and also a message of password reset email sent. Now at this point, let's try this route out in Postman to see if everything works fine. So we will send a post request in Postman to this endpoint, that is request password reset. So first we need to ensure that our server is running, so let's run it on the command line. We run it using nodemon server.js.
now our server is running ready for our messages and also has connected to the database so let's go to postman and send our request so in postman we create a new request this will be a post request our port is 5000 and our endpoint will be user forward slash request password reset now for the body of our request we'll pass some data now looking at the request in the code editor we need to pass an email and also a redirect url so for the email we pass one you have to ensure that this email is valid Now for the redirect URL, I don't have any proper frontend for now, so I'll just put any random link. Now once we've done that, we can go ahead to send our request. Good, so we see that our status is pending and the email has been sent. So now let's check our inbox to see if the email has truly been sent. So we see that our email is here. So the email was successful. Now let's check our database to see if our password reset record was saved. So I've opened the database in MongoDB Compass. You can equally check the collection when you log in in the browser. Once we refresh, we see that you have a new password reset collection. On opening the collection, we see that you have one record here. And this matches with the user who just requested for a password reset. And as we can see here too, between created at and expired at, the time is just an hour. And that's all for this section. We proceed in the next one. Please leave a like and subscribe for more to the point code. Since we want our reset records to expire in 60 hours, we have to check if it is still valid. It's 60 hours saying.